Hello everyone and welcome back to The Beatles Forever. I'm still in the book Paul McCartney by Philip Norman and I'm in the Wings timeline and so I said I'd post a video if I had any new information about this great band that we hadn't learned about in the other books I read so let us see the things that I found out. Well first up is the new studio is purchased and Paul purchased a new property in Scotland and it was right near his High Park farm. Paul bought a farm named Low Ranachin Farm, and it was from a retiring farmer. He had a large barn, and this is where the band would rehearse, leading to the song Big Barn Red. The, the Greystone Cottage is where they could live, and it was conveniently located over the hill from High Park, so Paul and Linda could get there from horseback, which must have been cool. Now we have the trouble with Henry McCulloch. Henry, like Paul, had been busted for a drunk possession, and he had his arrest when he was in Canada with the Animals Group. And he had more of a problem with drinking, which led to embarrassing incidents. McCulloch found out that the family atmosphere in the band could turn strict when something happened that Paul didn't like. One night, Henry did a one-time guest appearance with the jazz singer Carol Grimes. He was soon told that the Wings members only played with Wings. Another time, his 70-pound paycheck was short 40 pounds because of the purchase of an amplifier, which Henry hadn't been consulted about and he hadn't been warned about. So that had been kind of rough to find out when you have count on your full check to pay the bills. The main conflict, though, was Paul's control of guitar solos. It had to be meticulously planned in advance. Henry was used to improvising because he was a blues man at heart. Everyone can hear his talent when he was allowed freedom on the song My Love. Paul knew it was a great guitar solo, but he told Henry not to make a habit out of it. Things came to a head two weeks before the band was supposed to fly to Nigeria to record. Denny Sewell said, we were in the barn, and Paul wanted Henry to play something a certain way. Okay, this is kind of reminding me of an incident between Paul and George. So Henry didn't want to do it. Both of them were having a really bad day. Finally, there was an angry exchange which ended with Paul storming out, mounting his horse and riding home. And McCulloch got in his car and drove away, and he never returned. So Henry, he wasn't the only one that was unhappy. Denny Sewell didn't like how the proceeds of their recordings and performing successes were split up monetarily. Denny said it was understood that we'd all be part owners of the band and we'd share in its rewards. But there was never a contract. It was all done on a handshake, on trust. As I mentioned before, Sewell was receiving the same salary of 70 pounds a week, even after two years. In comparison, a top-rate session drummer could expect to earn 2000 So... The European tour was a success, but Paul still lost money on it. Sewell said that things were so bad he had to fly to New York and do a few sessions in order to pay off his American Express card. Sewell was expected to be on call 24 hours a day and do whatever was asked of him. And Denny Sewell felt that Paul shouldn't have let Henry go because he was such a talented guitarist. Sewell felt that Denny Lane was an okay guitarist, but not in the same league as Henry. Sewell felt it would be harder to cover up Linda's mistakes without Henry there. And then Denny remembered, Denny Sewell, that is, remembered that Denny's wife, Jojo, had given birth to a baby boy right before the group was to leave. So Paul and Linda never sent flowers or a card, and that got to Sewell. Denny Sewell phoned Paul and said he was quitting the night before they were supposed to leave. Denny Lane felt like it was a major blow because they were talented musicians, but Paul didn't cancel the trip. He wanted to show them they weren't as important as they thought they were. So Band on the Run was meant to be a concept album, just like Sgt. Pepper's, but this time for the 70s, but it didn't turn out that way. Jet was inspired by uh, Paul's Labrador Retriever. Let Me Roll It was a tip of the hat to John and the Plastic Ono Band. Helen Wheels was his Land Rover in Scotland. But Band on the Run was a major hit for Paul McCartney and Wings, and all the music critics loved it. It was the best-selling album in Britain in 1974. Now we have the band in America. Paul and Linda were criticized for taking their kids on the road with them, but their daughter Mary said her and her sister were always put to bed at the proper time, despite their pleas to stay up. Paul said, yes, there were parties, but they were more family parties. Uh, the band didn't stay in their motel rooms. They were out on a horseback riding with Paul, and Denny learned how to ride in Scotland, and Jimmy learned to ride too, when he was, and when he rode, he was relaxed. So the show included songs from Wings of the Speed of Sound, Venus and Mars, Band on the Run, as well as Maybe I'm Amazed. Another song was Let Him In, and this song was kind of a tribute to his father. 
The McCartney family would gather in Liverpool. The, di- the doorbell would ring constantly when partygoers arrived at the door. His father, Jim, would be playing the piano the whole time. Paul considered the lineup that he had of Joe English, Jimmy McCulloch, Denny Lane, Linda, and himself the best ever. So Joe English was a great drummer, and he was a good harmony singer, and he got along with Denny and Jimmy. And Linda had turned into a competent and at times a brilliant musician. Linda used to be uncomfortable on stage. Later, she would love performing at stadiums, and she said, I find big stadiums really intimate, and I don't ever want to go back to the little ones. The book Paul McCartney said that Paul and Linda were always very friendly and open, but there was a moment when one had to step back. So that was a quote from Humphrey Ocean, who was the tour's artist in residence. After every show, they got into their limo and went off to their house, whichever one it was, and the band went to the hotels. Then we have The Trouble in Scotland. Paul and his band returned to Scotland and continued to work in the Renatchen studio that Paul had made from the farm he had purchased, as I mentioned earlier. So Denny and his wife Jojo and three children were staying at the low Renatchen cottage, and she said it was just a couple of old chairs and some ragged pea-stained mattresses. And Jimmy wasn't very happy there either. He was at the low Renatchen with the roadies. And one night, Jimmy was bored or doing drugs or both when he took eggs that Linda had there and started throwing them on the living room wall. Linda was in tears over the waste, and Paul was angry and told Jimmy to leave. So Jimmy then left and joined the group's small faces. Next to leave was Joe English. He was getting homesick and was quitting the band to go home to Macon, Georgia. And this was the second time he lost a drummer and guitarist at the same time. So I bet that must have been rough to deal with, not once, but twice. And I discovered that Joe English had a heroin problem that was worse than Jimmy McCulloch's, and he spent most of his money on it. English said that he overdosed two or three times, and he once stayed unconscious for 24 hours, and he was used to waking up where he was. And the book says that Denny Lane sealed the doom of the Wings band. So Denny had gone through changes in the band and all the policies in the band, and he wanted out if they weren't going to be touring anymore. And you could hardly blame him because touring was the only way he was going to make more than the standard salary he was getting weekly. It was said that Lane left without there being a riff. I have a feeling Paul at this point didn't care as much about the band as he used to. So Lane joined Linda and Paul to do overdubs later on George's tribute song to John Lennon all those years ago. And after that, Lane kind of drifted away from Paul. So I didn't find anything else regarding Wings that we didn't know before from the previous videos I'd done, but I'm going to keep my eyes peeled for anything else we might not have realized about Wings, and I'll post a video if I do find out any new information. So I hoped everybody liked the video. If you did, if you could give it a thumbs up, that would be greatly appreciated. And be sure to click on the notification bell, and you'll be informed when a new video pops up. I hope everybody's been having a good day. And tune in again later for another episode of The Beatles Forever. Thank you. Bye.